Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of Geekly Reveal. It's that show that brings you geeky news on a weekly basis, all kinds of cool pop culture stuff. You know how it is. As always, it's me, your humble host, Dom, aka Brother Dom, all over the internet. And once again, I am joined by the socially responsible co host. Would you like to tell the people who it is that you are? Konbanwa, Watashi wa Stephanie Des. Um, it's Stephanie, who's been doing a lot of Duolingo on her phone during this, uh, prolonged, <laughs> prolonged, uh, social distancing, and, you know, I don't know, you, you know the biz, you can find me out there on the internet, um, Captain Steph on Twitter, Snowqueer on Tumblr, etc. Et but, uh, but I'm here right now. Steph, you are here, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing alright, it's a Sunday night, it's, uh... It was a chill weekend, didn't see the AM on either side of Saturday or Sunday, so that was nice. Um, Damn, that, nice that straight sleep. relaxation though. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, feeling pretty pretty good. How about you? Very nice. Uh, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Been, um, you know, all things considered, there's the uh, general creeping panic in the back of the mind, but <laughs> um, all things considered though, things are going pretty well. The weather's been very nice you know to get air open windows and that sort of thing it has it's been very pleasant um spending a lot of time with my partner uh, she continues to watch movies and have me there <laughs> today we <laughs> so you continue rent- to i continue to see new movies um new shows and all kinds of stuff so we saw jumanji today the remake uh jumanji oh, nice. the how Jungle. was it you know, it was good. I, I didn't really want to watch it. This is like the first time we've watched something together. I'm like, you know, I don't really, I'm not really feeling that, but I like spending time with her. And I, how bad could it be? The Rock's always a joy to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, Karen Gillan, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, all great actors. Or at least enjoyable to watch, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it was an enjoyable time. I Definitely serviceable. Not something we want to like definitely revisit a lot or anything like that, but enough to like want to see the sequel and... It was a good use of time. It was it was nice to use that Fandango thing they have going on where you can like rent these movies. I guess maybe you always could, but they're letting you rent or buy even more recent stuff like Birds of Prey or The Rise of Skywalker. For some reason, you want to do that. I was going to say, yeah, uh, Birds of Prey, I can see you wanting to do that. Rise of Skywalker, not so no, much. But they are doing kind of cool bundles where you can like get the whole... I guess it's the Skywalker Saga now, because you can't see the franchise, but if you want to say episodes 1 through 9, you could just say Skywalker Saga, because it was always about uh-huh. that damn family. It's always about the mess. <laughs> always about their mess. I guess mess. you don't get, like, Rogue One or Solo or anything like that, which are movies people generally like, um, to a degree. But also... <laughs> Interestingly enough, I just I just had to stop, but I feel like Rise of Skywalker was also something, like, like we were talking about last week, we were talking about that uh, Marvel New Warriors character, where it was like, the people who hate diversity hate this, and the people who like diversity also hate this, kind of thing. And I feel like it just had, like, the thought that, like, Rise of Skywalker's, like, people who hated The Last Jedi ha- also hated this, but people who loved The Last Jedi also hated this. Yeah, at least like, with, like, the New Warriors, there was a little bit of... Well, everybody hates this, but some people hate it for the wrong reason kind of thing. Whereas, like, mm-hmm. I feel like everybody hated Rise of Skywalker for generally the same reason. Like, even the people that liked it were like, this wasn't great. Yeah, like, I enjoyed watching it, but I was n- under no pretensions that it was a good or satisfying conclusion <laughs> to the story. Yeah, like, that's the thing about movies. They don't have to be good. I mean, good is subjective, but they need to be satisfying to some degree, you know what I mean? Um... And mm-hmm. a lot of people could say they weren't satisfied by any of the movies and that, which I'll give you. Um, it's one thing to say I wasn't satisfied by The Last Jedi, but I can't judge its quality, maybe. Or, But The Rise of Skywalker, I'm like, this was technic- like very te- from a technical level, pretty good. Some interesting stuff, you know, was going on on there. But, like, I wasn't really satisfied by any of that. Like, it's like, oh, okay, cool. I would have... We really should just make a movie between Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and call The Last Jedi the end of the... <laughs> it would have been a more satisfying <laughs> ending with like you know luke dying and passing the torch leia saying i think we could fight mm-hmm. to live another day kylo ren's not like the leader of the bad guys that's like they're putting a nice bow on everything the same like not a nice bow but things are done but instead palpatine came back mm-hmm. off screen um dun, dun, dun. off screen he believed but no um so we, we well, so welcome to our rise of skywalker uh, cast it, it's <laughs> but we rented jumanji off of fandango and i looked around and like parasites there knives out is there um the my hero movies there oh i felt 
I felt Ooh. old today. I felt so sad. I, I, it, it creeping up on me that I am like a third, about to be a thirty year old, and you know I'm not hip mm. with the kids anymore. And it's not so much that I seek <laughs> children's approval because a that's creepy, um, unless it's like family friends. B it's impossible even if it's not creepy because children are very discerning. And just a lot of other things, but it's not about that. It's just about, like, if I'm not really into the kids anymore, that means I'm not young. And that means I'm getting closer to, like, not having uh, dreams. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the thing that made me feel old today is, as, as my partner was scrolling through the Fandango, like, options that you could buy or rent, it was, um, like, lesser known titles was the, was the title, right? So the first thing that mm-hmm. caught my eye was Spirited Away, the uh, Miyazaki film. And I'm like, that's not unknown to people. I'm like, well... Lesser but maybe yeah. to the mainstream that doesn't know anime, maybe. But I'm like, that's like Howl's Moving Castle, maybe. Like that one, that one, an Oscar. Yeah, like, okay, that's that's kind of weird, but you know, it's been a while. But then like stuff like Roger Rabbit was on there. I'm like, Roger Rabbit is the most famous like live action cartoon movie of all time. Like, well, Space Jam probably is, but everyone's heard of this. Like, unless you're like really young, I guess. Mm. And then it just seemed like a bunch of stuff. Like, oh, this is just like older stuff. Like, oh no. So the hope was that <laughs> the hope was just that it, since they had like the it was like recommended from Rotten Tomatoes, so it's like well maybe these are things that just weren't reviewed a lot because of I don't know Who Framed Roger Rabbit came out before the internet was huge, so you know probably no one reviewed it on Rotten Tomatoes since they had a need to, but there was like a lot of stuff on <laughs> like this this isn't lesser known this is just like old stuff like oh no I'm old oh no. Uh, yeah, I, my thing that I'm scoping out for uh, to watch streaming is uh, Portrait of a Woman on Fire, which is, like, I know nothing about except that, it, that like, all of the queer women I know really loved it, and that the uh, the director and, the I think, the lead, like, walked out of some award show when they gave Roman Polanski an award. Oh, uh, that's a good reason to walk so, out. <laughs> so I was like, mm, I don't know anything about this, and it doesn't seem like the kind of movie, like, that I would typically watch or watch like even like the kind of movie that me and my roommate would watch together but uh i might have to give it a shot you have time and you be in good company (laughs) got nothing but time and it's on hulu and we have the paid hulu subscription so it was uh pretty good stuff i have to admit some might as well there's 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 lots of fun stuff uh anywhere or or, everywhere so there's like lots of things you can find so but yeah overall things are going well uh, (laughs) Good. So, uh, among the things that you have watched um, recently, shall we talk about one of them? Oh yeah. Um, you know, let's 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 start with the uh, let's start with the cartoons. Let's 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 build some okay. anticipation. Okay. Um, Steven Universe future the uh, finale to the series and the Steven Universe series overall. There they were in the future. It's, it's done. Steven Universe is over now. It's over. It's over, isn't it? Um, I can't sing, which I could. Um, but yeah, uh, lots of people in their feelings, like in a neutral way, just since something big ended. And series ending always gives me like sort of goosebumps and like the passage of time feels like kind of melancholic. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't keep up with Adventure Time. Just because the schedule got kind of weird and I was moving out to college, I didn't have Cartoon Network, so just things got kind of weird. But I watched, like, the, f- the final song from the finale and just seeing, like, all these mm-hmm. loose ends come together and saying, like, hey, it's going to stay a loose end. That's just how life is, kind of. Like, I shed a tear when I watched it. Like, I haven't seen this show in years. I don't know how any of this stuff happened. I don't know what the final conflict was, but, like, this still mm-hmm. meant a lot to know that it's been over after all this. Like, the finale to regular show that I haven't kept up with regular show, but I knew a lot about. I watched, like, the final end of that episode, and it was sad, and I cried for that finale. And the same with this. I mm-hmm. shed a little bit of tear, like, just because it's over, and, it, and there's a lot of... Isn't it? <laughs> it's just that, like, don't yeah. be sad that it's over. Be happy it happened. And, yeah, the show meant a mm-hmm. lot to a lot of people. Happy you got to experience yeah. it. Yeah, and, you know, I know there's a lot of toxic people in the fan base, and a lot of things happen, but... There's always going to be that for every fandom. Uh, I'm a Sonic fan, so, you know, I'm also kind of aware of Star Wars, so, you know. Mm-hmm. But it meant so much to so many people to have a cartoon that uh, was very open about having uh, queer couples, uh, queer lesbian couples. Mm-hmm. Uh, queer characters Non-binary characters. General. You know, they had a non-binary 
character that was a fusion of two people and then they had a, another character that was a non-binary person that was a human being so it's you know you have it i was with Go ahead. i was thinking about that well as like in that shep episode i was thinking about that because i um i think shep is the only like regular human non-binary character and i think maybe there, there was some like like one of there's discourse occasionally from time to time not like in a and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean, like, it's something people talk about. About, like, characters... Like, like only, like, aliens or, like, non-human characters being the non-binary yeah. people. So I feel like Shep was, like, a much-needed addition to the cast in that yeah. way. In the case of Stevani, they are uh, still, like, just 75% human because the other 25% is, is magic person. Um but even if, mm-hmm. I think it'd be a little bit more for something uh, in like a Garnet situation where Garnet is more of an all the time character where Stevani just kind of happens sometimes. It's not like they're always mm-hmm. here or that they're here that often. So I wouldn't even count it that way. Whereas if Garnet was non-binary, I would give that a little bit more credit, but it would still be in that camp of alien people. Definitely more mm-hmm. so. So they may have been yeah. doing some course correcting, but it didn't feel... It didn't feel him. No, it was just like, oh, hey, see, he has a partner. It's not Lars. Like, it was just like, oh, it's not Lars. Damn mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the, the, <laughs> the conflict wasn't like, oh, Shep has, or like, like, Shep's non-binary. The conflict was, Shep isn't Lars. Yeah, like, which is, like, no, our ships, everything is, oh, no, everything's changing. And that was about when I realized, oh, this, this season's uh, just here to heartbreak the fans, isn't it? And, uh. This season's just about like letting go of everything we once loved. It's teaching us how to let go so that when the when the season ends, we can let go of Steven Universe. Yeah, which, which is hard. There haven't been a lot of shows like it. There have been lots of shows that have gone over like childhood trauma and friendship and you know trying to be more pacifist, but none quite like this. <laughs> this did it in such a yeah it did it in such a just like a heartfelt like heartfelt way it never felt like ham-handed or like a very special episode even the episode that was called (laughs) a very special episode like didn't feel like it was beating you over the head with a message like it was just like this is modeling how to deal with anxiety like or like how to deal with with like stress or loss or trauma like in a way that's just really accessible and meaningful to kids and adults. Yeah. And, and they did it in such a, a sneaky way. Because it definitely started like some some goofy ass mm-hmm. Adventure Time shit. <laughs> like, oh, hey, it's this little like, little yeah. goofy goofy dude with his three moms. Like, oh, he has a, a gem in his stomach. That's weird, I guess, but okay. And, oh, he has like a little shield. He likes cookies. This seems like it's going to be annoying. That was my first impression. And then, oh, they fight monsters. It's the monster of the week. So that that's fine. This is pretty episode. This is uh, mm-hmm. episodic. It doesn't matter. Like, oh, it's it's actually pretty serious. Oh, there's a plot. Oh, oh, okay, cool. He's his mom. Oh, okay. Oh, it's oh wow. This is dark. Great, cool. Now I'm invested. It's like oh, his mom is not just not just like has like a secret identity, but has been like the biggest bitch the to everyone. <laughs> like if the, there was like one theme to Steven Universe future, it was. Pink Diamond kind of sucked. <laughs> Rose Quartz slash Pink Diamond was just the ex- worst to everyone. Ex- how much of this is like the Diamond's fault, and how much of it is just like, oh, Pink kind of just kind of sucked, and I don't know. Huh. I was gonna say, I wish we could could have seen more of Spinel, not because she had anything to do, but I just think she's a fun character yeah. who acts like Sonic the Hedgehog, also um, with her little infinity running and spin <laughs> dashes and flying like tails. But I just like that she's a fun character, like. Oh, hey, you know, I'm fine. It's typical depression. It's good. Hey, how are the things since I tried to kill you? My bad for that, by the way. Um, I think she's just fun. I feel like... My- yeah, she was really fun. Um, I think, like, my thing that I... The one thing that I do wish that I had seen, and, like, maybe they were using it to say something about, like, asexuality or something because... Like, because fusion is a metaphor. Um... But I did. I was kind of curious to see Peridot fuse with someone. Yeah, that would have been cool. Mostly point. just out of the. There's always the curiosity of just. I just want to know what that would look like. Like I'm just, I'm just curious on it from like a yeah an artistic standpoint, not even necessarily plot. 
Maybe they are. I mean, that would have been a good... That would have been a good take to, like... Because, mm-hmm. I mean, like, even that... The one episode where she almost fused with Garnet. Garnet basically said something along the lines of, like, it's okay if you're not ready now and even if you're yeah, not ready like it kind been of thing. Yeah, like, good to hear, like, a more specific comment of... I've decided that fusion is not for me. I don't see it as like a purity or dirty thing like mm-hmm. I did when I was from Homeworld. But it's not something that I have any interest in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would have been like yeah. a good, how to put it, like that would have just been a good thing to put out in the world. Yeah, that's an interesting, yeah, a good thing to put in the, yeah, just to have stated explicitly yeah. kind of Or even thing. like, a, hey, I never want to do, I don't really want to do fusion from like a, a an emotional standpoint, but like in a battle way, because that metaphor has been mixed to death and there's probably some times there would be useful for Peridot to fuse with somebody. Like, instead of having to fly Bismuth around in mm-hmm. her armor, wouldn't it have made sense to fuse with Bismuth and they can just fly themselves around instead of having to be flown around? From a utility standpoint, <laughs> yes, but from a story standpoint, there's no need to do that. I do like that she could control her... Mm-hmm. Is it ferrokinesis we could control metal? Metal kinesis? Yeah, pharaohs fer- would be like iron, so yeah. Yeah. Um, she's just flying bismuth around because she's wearing that armor. Like, that's a pretty cool thing that you added. Like, I like that. It's like yeah. a beast, beast Boy and Cyborg kind of thing. Same color schemes, too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have liked to see that or see one of the Crystal Gems actually get some, like, romance going on because it seemed like mm-hmm. bismuth was digging Pearl. Where's Mystery yeah. Woman? She yeah, whatever happened came to back. Mystery Girl? <laughs> Because per- Pearl's a player, and she did- she's like, one woman's not enough for me. <laughs> right? Even at that, in the roller derby episode, she was like, humans will give you their number. Like, it's like, not that maybe not all humans, Pearl. Maybe they just give them to you because they're all in love with you. Well, remember when he when Steven went into her memories to find out about Rose? Like, didn't she have, like, a ton of phone numbers or something? She shit? did! Like, she had like, a yo, ton of phone numbers. Pearl is a player player. Even Amethyst has a couple, like, humans on the side. Yeah, she's got Vidalia. And maybe Greg? Like, yeah, I'm willing to believe Greg? maybe Greg. Like, yeah. I feel like they dropped that thread pretty quick, though, but... Because it seemed like they had a, a bit of a past or something. No, yeah, they totally beyond did. Beyond just, like, oh, we watched the little butler together, like, mm, okay. It's like, is that it? Is that all you did? <laughs> is there is any that other- a metaphor for... <laughs> I mean, Gar- uh, you know, Greg Universe likes him thick. He, he ain't no liar. Um, <laughs> I would have liked to see Lapis and Peridot have, like, more of a we appreciate each other moment. Yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 I feel fulfilled with everything. It's more like, hey, I would have liked to see this for the fan service of it, but not necessarily because it was anything that we needed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I feel well, it's, it's, it's kind of double sided because, like you said, like, I feel like having that message, like, for Peridot about fusion stated explicitly would have been like really like thought like a meaningful thing to put into the story but at the yeah. same time a lot of me wanting to see Peridot fuse with someone was just like that prurient curiosity well yeah I mean well that's that's what I'm saying like I would have liked them to say that to know if like that was the case or did they just not fit it in because if that wasn't if if it's not that like she had like an asexual storyline yo let me ship my like homeworld girls together like her and her and lapis were like my that's like a big ship that i think a lot of people liked mm-hmm. would have been a cool fusion they already hang out together and make meat morphs together um <laughs> <laughs> so i've been like oh yeah like are they space girlfriends or are they just homies like can we get a can we get a line on that because that's what I, I that that's why i i would i would want to know that but at the same time it perfectly like, it, it doesn't matter let's just move on and that's kind of weird Steven's seeing a therapist. That's good. That's nice. a little bit late yeah. to the game, but that's very yeah. good. Better late than never. I feel like he, he only mentions them in the final episode, so it's like, man, a lot of problems could have been solved. Well, yeah, that's because uh, he has his big meltdown when he turns into a kaiju. Sorry, yeah. there's spoilers. This I'm sorry, but I think it's been a fan theory ever since like all the episodes were going, and there's like this big monster like in the intro. Mm-hmm. We're like, we've dealt with every other threat, and that thing has the same jawline as Steven. So, like, uh, what's going on here? Which, I like that they dealt with it with love, which is the theme of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, hey, uh, is this basically just a corrupted diamond? Because, like, we know how to stop that. Let's just whoop its ass, bubble it, and throw it in the little pond. Like, <laughs> um, I mean, I would I, I would have liked that to be a two-parter. 
where they try to fight giant rock steven Mm -hmm. and then come to the conclusion oh wait no like we fought through a lot of things we need to solve it with friendship and love because that's how they do everything but it would have been nice to see them try to fight him and see what happened i don't Mm -hmm. know i feel like there was some trying of fighting but it wasn't very effective yeah alexandrite is that is that alexandrite the fusion i think so one of them, the, the the three main crystal gems turned into that fusion, which was nice to see her one last time. Mm-hmm. And got the jump until Steven did a back bomb and they split up. And then Connie's like, yo, all y'all adults are trash. Get it together. <laughs> Just love the man. Holy hell. No, but yeah, like, so there was that. And then like, I think Steven said like six, three or six months had passed. Mm-hmm. And he was seeing a therapist at that point. Yeah. So it's weird to do a time skip to a show and then do another time skip within that show. Yeah. But... It was kind of like an epilogue episode. Yeah. It was an epilogue to an epilogue already. Like Yeah, an epilogue episode to the epilogue season. But no, it is good. It's I feel like there's a lot of loose threads, but that's kind of the point. Like, we don't know what's going on with, with Lars. Like, we know Steven's going to see him, but we don't know what those adventures are like. We don't know what Sadie and Shep's new band looks like. Where's the other suspects from Sadie County? The suspects are, like, they're going with, like, the medical school and DJing and stuff. Mm-hmm. What do they do? We don't know and what Connie's going doing. off to off to college. Steven's going off to to road trip. Also, they made a comment. There's like only 38 states. Like, yeah, it's almost like, like Florida Island. It's like, is this one of those things? Like the hole in Russia? I think it probably is. Like, there's probably some states that there's like, no, we're not going to give them the value. Like Pennsylvania exists, but it's like the Keystone State they call it, or like yeah, they call it Key- something they, else. The state is called Keystone. Yeah. And there's Empire City, which is probably, like, New York. New York, yeah. Well, I guess they're probably in New Jersey, then, if they're that close to Pennsylvania and New York. They yeah, must and it can Jersey. snow. Yeah, Beach City must be in New Jersey, or, like, right around that area, but... Or just on the other part of New York, for all we know. But, yeah. Good show, overall. Lots of memories. It, it meant a lot. It, it gets up there with the pantheon of shows for kids and also teenagers and adults, like, it's... Good stuff. It meant a lot to a lot of people. Still got a cosplay it one day. I was going to say, when yeah. are we going to be Steven and Connie? <sighs> hey, whenever. <laughs> ne- next con, I don't know, whenever quarantine's done. I just got to get a t-shirt. Get out there. F- wait, wait. Am- no, I'm doing Connie, so we can do the other colors. Right? Yeah, I just got to get a wig and like a... I don't know. Connie has a lot of outfits. <laughs> you just have to pick which one you want, man. The, the training one. <laughs> right? Yeah, the, like, the, like, hair and pants kind of deal. Yeah, like, there was, like, vaguely, like, ninja-esque. Yeah. Yeah. Weirdly enough, this one, just a final note, is that, weirdly enough, despite, um, this season just completely underlying how much of, like, a, like, blah blah huge bitch, um, Rose Quartz was, I do kind of want to cosplay Pink Diamond now. Like, I've already cosplayed as Lars, so I have the pink makeup. I mean, yeah, you like villains, right? I like villains. I like the the whole aesthetic. Like, feel more comfortable cosplaying as Pink Diamond than as Rose Quartz. More my body type. That's fair, yeah. Like. There's also Spinel, if you want to stretch a little bit. It'll be like when I cosplayed Tylee, I'll just stretch, like, every day before, (laughs) before the con so that I can actually do, like, some... I could do a split for like one weekend in in college because I stretched like every day for six weeks before the convention so that when I went to the convention as Ty Lee, I could do a heel stretch and I could do a split for pictures. That's what that's what, that's what and conventions that is, are all about. Is and that is perfecting just your body. Truly me in a nutshell and how I how I exercise. Which con was that? Because I feel like you went home and ate a bunch of cheese after that. Oh, I'm I feel sure. like you that told was... me that you did that. <laughs> that was Teco, I think, my freshman year of college. But I, the year that I was Red Sonia at New York Comic Con, the first year I was, I think, uh, I think it was 2017, I, like, was running and, like, calorie counting up till the con. And then, like, I got to the con and I was like, and chicken fingers are going immediately <laughs> into my stomach. <laughs> like, That's what it's all about. Making your body look like, a certain way for a costume. It's for like, the aesthetic. Look, this isn't about health or really even body image. It's just about trying to adhere to a specific look for about 48 to 72 hours. <laughs> it's uh, disordered and terrible, and I do not recommend that people who might fixate on their eating ever try to do that. But I, I just... Strength anybody who needs it. Yeah. 
But anyway, what else have you been watching um, in this strange time? So I've been kind of dipping in and out of uh, Tiger King Ooh. because that's that's it's that that's a lot. Um, and there's a there's a lot of discourse to be had around that. I mean, I think I was I was going through Facebook and your uh, the order of your brothers posted something that made me think a lot about it. Mm-hmm. Um, about like, hey, you know, we're all laughing at this, but a lot of it's actually sad and depressing that it happens. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, we were talking a- about that last night in our family group chat. Like, did you, probably not, it doesn't seem like your speed necessarily, but did you listen to S-Town? It was a spinoff of Serial, the podcast. N- nah. I didn't think so, but, so like, one of the things, like, obviously, like, every episode of Tiger King is so bonkers, and, <laughs> like, and it they really all end is. on, like, such a, like, oh, and here's this other thing kind of moment, like, but, um, S-Town was about this, like, very eccentric gay man who might have had, I think he had, like, mercury poisoning or something because he was, he, like, was very into clock making and, like, working with antique clocks, and at the end of, like, shortly after the series premiered, either shortly after the series premiered or while the series was running, he died by suicide, and, like, he was from, like, this very tiny like kind of hick town that he is called he called it shit town which is why this podcast called s town but okay um but like there was a lot of discourse after the podcast premiered about like how kind of voyeuristic it was like looking into this like clearly mentally ill man's like whole deal and kind of making a like a spectacle of it and like Joe Exotic is not a well man, ultimately. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't watch enough of it to know. Mm-hmm. I think, um, so what a lot of it was interesting was just, like, the surface level stuff about it. Like, a gun-loving gay dude with a horrible mullet um, in bad fashion sense, which mm-hmm. was one of those things where I'm like, mm, I don't know about any of his escapades and how much of, like, his... his uh, mental health has to do with any of the bad stuff he did mm-hmm. but i'm looking at some of these jackets and i i, I don't think that's why he thought this was a good idea uh, like i feel <laughs> i feel fairly okay laughing at like a pink sequin jacket with like really tight jeans because mm-hmm. i've seen people wear stuff like that they had all of their mental capacities to them um i've mm-hmm. seen people that didn't I'm like, I feel like that's that part, that kind of stuff was more neutral. And that's always just funny to me, like the, like Southern style. Um, and the ridiculousness of so many of these things were kind of funny. Like, man, this, this guy has like a grudge against this woman enough to like make a diss track. That's, that's so petty and ridiculous. That's kind of. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. And then you're like, at the beginning, you're like, oh, well, this big cat rescue is clearly the good guy in this. And like, (laughs) and Joe Exotic Sue is the bad guy. And then you're like, oh, but Carol Baskin really definitely did murder her husband and feed him (laughs) to a tiger. Like that's incontrovertible to me, whether or not. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's, it's it's more so like, this is just all so weird that you, you laugh and just say, what the fuck? Because like every time you're like, oh, I get it. This person illegally owned cat, like exotic cats. And you're like, or, oh, well, wait, no, well, he's actually running a cult. Like, he's like oh, and has multiple like, wives. Like, it's like, oh, this guy, te- like, tenuously legally owns these big cats. I get it. That's that's the story. Oh, okay. They're, they're probably abusing him. That's the story. Oh, you, you say he's polygamous? That's kind of weird. But I mean, to each their own, I suppose. Oh, this seems kind of cult like. Oh, so I guess it's probably about the cult then. Well, okay, so before we get to the next chapter, we have to talk about this other guy who originally <laughs> loved cats when he was a child, thinks Scarface is based on him, went to jail for getting somebody killed, got out of jail, and then to start, decided to start doing big cat stuff, and apparently had always loved animals and has pictures to prove it, and he's part of the story. It's like, oh, wait, so that's a, is that Joe Exotic? No, no, this is the other guy. That he'll be important later, but if we don't tell you now, it won't make sense later. You're like... Yeah, it's just there's so much crazy <laughs> stuff going on, and like some of it is is hard to watch from an animal bu- abuse perspective. Yeah, that's, for that's sure. True. Like there, there's like a scene where they like literally like a tiger has is in the in the midst of giving birth to cubs, and they come out and like pull the cubs out of the cage away from her, like to take uh. and like bring inside so that they can, because like their whole the whole way they fund themselves is, f- selves is through, like, cub petting photo shoots. 
See that? Yeah, that kind of stuff is terrible. And so like that was re- that's really hard to watch. And like obviously, like also like all these people like in addition like and it's a, a vicious circle. But like meth is not like not unheard of in this situation. Yeah. Like many drugs are being used that are destructive. Like. Yeah, the episode, I want to say it's three, when you find out that, um, right, you find out, like, in quick succession, and I feel like it wasn't a quick succession in real life, but you find out this, that Joe's first husband, like, so he had two husbands at one point. Simultaneously, and, yeah. Yeah, and his first husband decides to leave for some reasons, I, I, I can't remember, and then his other husband, um, unfortunately commits suicide. Um, By accident. And, yeah, from, you know, being... Like, playing around with a gun. Yeah, and it's it's really disturbing to 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 watch. Like, they show the... So the video doesn't show him doing it, it just shows someone's reaction because they're in the same place. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the, the look on his face, and he tells you, like, I, I... You know you see something like this, and you just don't believe it because your brain doesn't want to believe that you just saw what you saw, and you want to think it's a joke because you... The guy would joke, and you want to believe that because... You just saw this, mm-hmm. and like this guy's a campaign manager for also Joe Exotic ran for president and then governor, which and got nineteen percent of the vote for governor. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, that's, that's the wild. That's the wildest fact that I took away from this show. Yes. Um. Yeah, that floored me. I'm like, how do you how do you look at this and be like, oh wow, we didn't win? Like, bro, you got roughly a fifth of the votes. Like, that should have never happened. Even if like some of them were throwaways, like you almost beat the the number two person. Like, this is outrageous, but. The poor campaign manager just, like, was not really in most of this. He was like, I thought Joe was was crazy. Like, you know, his he words. Was like, um, he was like, I was But I'm just a, here for the experience. Like, <laughs> I'm just here for the experience. I was the, the manager at Walmart at the, gun, <laughs> at the gun counter. And Joe, I saw Joe every day because he's always in buying ammo. And he asked me if I wanted to run his campaign. And I was like, sure, what the hell? Like, yeah, so, I wanted so to get into guy, this. Yeah, so this guy gets swept up into all this nonsense. See somebody, like, you know, like, shoot themselves. And even him talking about it later, like, the, obviously you wouldn't recover from some crazy shit like that. That's really wild. Um, it's really difficult. Um, so there's a lot of stuff there, and I'm not trying to take anyone's fun away. I'm not going to sit here on a pedestal and act like I wasn't laughing at so much of the ridiculous stuff. I mean, there's some stuff that's just kind of funny, like the... Um, like the diss tracks and, like, the country the music. Diss tracks. The one guy who... This part's not funny. That lost his legs. Actually, from something completely unrelated mm-hmm. yeah, to this. Yeah, he had, like, he diabetes came back to, or something, yeah. Yeah, and came back to work too early and lost his feet. So, like, that's, there's nothing funny about that. It's, it is humorous when he's like, but I got these awesome legs, though. And you look at it like, mm-hmm. that's not an awesome pattern, my dude, but you're from a different place than me. I'll give you that. But just the way he would talk about some of the stories and have, like, a little laugh about it. Like, yeah, they did this. It wasn't going to work. And, like, that's kind of funny seeing people reminisce about their past. Mm-hmm. Um... The one homie who uh, I, I believe goes by male pronouns. I was gonna say um, Saf. The who lost her uh, Saf. Yeah, I, I saw on L- Twitter that apparently he, uh, apparently the show misgenders him as female for the whole thing. And I, I, but. I don't. Based on what they were, I don't know if they that was on purpose or they didn't know or if they. I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to make any assumptions because I didn't know. I was just going mm-hmm. with what the show told me. But I figured I they told. were just kind of butch, but. Um, but anyway, he I, loses his arm. I, loses his arm and goes back to work, like, I'm like... Like, the day after. Like, would rather just have the... Like, because being in the hospital would bring more, like, for the amount of time it would have taken to rehab his arm, would have left him... Would have brought so much bad publicity to the zoo. They were, he, he was just, like, chop it off and went back to work. I think I think a lot of people would have, like, got their arm chopped off at that point for different reasons, because I don't know how... I mean, it would have been expensive, and obviously there's a little bit of class intersection here. Mm-hmm. But I was like, man, it, things are wild in the, like in this area, and there's definitely some classism and not not racism exactly, but laughing at like poor white people. Mm-hmm. That, no, yeah, um, involved, I agree. Which, um, I mean, black people laugh at white people a lot. Um, I do like Asian and back. Actually, non-white people laugh at white people a lot. Um, which I mean, go for it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it, it, it really just is a wild ride, and there's a lot to enjoy there that's not necessarily at the expense of, like, someone who's, like, has a disability or mental illness, but there's a lot of stuff to be cognizant of there. It is an interesting story. Um, I mean, laughing at... Uh, we also laughed at when, when the woman 
who people think killed her husband. She's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, he apparently tried to go to, to, to Costa Rica and didn't make it. And everyone's like, like, I was really? laughing at the lawyer saying, like, look, I'm not going to say anything, but it's very <laughs> suspicious. Like, oh, that's funny. Like, I, 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 it'd be very weird for someone to write that in their will. In my law practice of over 30 years, I've never seen that in my entire life. Like, never I, seen I a, a, a will kick in on the disappearance of someone. Yeah, he's like, that's, that, I, I mean, I'm not going to say that's something happened, but I've never seen that. Like, that's, there's joy to be derived there, but it also is very interesting. And it's also very just good to see a crime, a true crime thing that's not another, uh, Like rapist or, yeah, serial killer. Well, obviously, that I mean, it's, I assume it's very triggering to see, like, basically woman abusers as all the people, mm-hmm. but, um... It's nice to see true crime where it's uh, not nice, but to see something that's different. Because I think people who are watching, like people, are like why do you all you people like support like watching this murder or whatever? Like no, people just like true crime. If you give people other true crime to watch, people will watch it. If like there was that thing I think on Netflix or Hulu about like old bank robbers that were women like from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Like people loved it. It's just that that's the only one that they ever made about it. So it's like okay, well I guess only seven women robbed banks back in the day. <laughs> I'm just know. thinking of the. We watched all three of John Mulaney's stand up specials last night, and I was thinking of the the <laughs> bit he does about like how like in the back in the day you used to d- dress up to go do a bank robbery. <laughs> you know how easy it was to get away? You had to just not be there when the cops showed up. We found all this blood. You're like dressed Gross. up, dressed Throw up, it away. <laughs> <laughs> dressed up like you're going to church in Atlanta to rob a <laughs> bank. <laughs> like that's uh We watched uh. The newest one, Kid Gorgeous, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, with Street Smarts, that's a good one. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, New in Town is, is top tier. It's going to be hard to top that. It's, it's no fault of his. Well, it's his fault that he made such a banger special as one of his first one, first big ones, but you know. Yeah, it's hard to... I mean, like, the, the other ones still, I mean, they're pretty, still pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, here's the thing. But... Here's, what I, here's what I said to, to, to my partner. You know, yeah, there's different levels of 10 out of 10. Just because the 10 out of 10 doesn't mean that other 10 out of 10 wasn't, like, shining and sparkling, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Maybe you got that one 10 out of the 10 by the skin of your teeth, but the other yeah. one was, like, an easy, like, it goes to success kind of thing. Yeah, like, you get 10 out of 10 in the first five minutes, you just keep going. No, I just think that everyone was in a weird place when uh, Kid Gorgeous came out. Yeah. Because... But, because the horse is in the, the hospital. <laughs> it's such a good joke, and he's just like... I do not like these new Nazis, and you may quote me on that. <laughs> the one thing you said that I, I think it, it it bears repeating is, he's like, oh, well, you didn't care when the last guy was in here doing the same thing. Like, he's like, I don't care when people look like they're good at their job. I don't look into things. You might say that's irresponsible, but if you left your kid with your mom, you wouldn't race home to check the baby monitor like you would if you left it with a crack at it. You're like, yeah, I mean, I think it's a pr- it's a pretty good pretty apt thing. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, Obama did a lot of bad things, but for the most part, he didn't really raise suspicions of uh, normal people. And also, all the evil stuff was business as usual, not like business as usual and worse. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're an imperialist country. You're only supposed to mess with other people. What are you, do- what are you doing with this? Um, <laughs> which is a failing. We all can admit that, but it was definitely a horse in the hospital, rather a bad doctor, <laughs> as far as this metaphor can take us. Yeah. All right. So uh, I feel like we've done Tiger King to death. Um, no. It's a lot to think about. I was... Yeah, there's just a lot to unpack there, like... Whew, yeah, just but, so well, much. we have two things two things left though. We can hit them pretty yeah. quickly. Um so I've been playing a new game. Uh it's called One Step from Eden. It will mm-hmm. be uh in a couple days, probably. Two to three days, you'll see it in our other sideshow. Shameless plug for uh getting by. Uh we're doing a little recommendation show just to try to help people listen to something that doesn't get mired in so much of the bad stuff that's going on right now. Uh it's not as depressing as gestures at everything and it's just something it's a recommendation i've typed, you can I've typed do that the day. phrase gestures at everything so much in the last couple of weeks i mean it's apt it's apt um but no yeah we're doing a little recap thing of just one thing you can do to if you're getting bored or you're not sure what to watch or play or read or look at here's some things you can look at uh so i i recommend that talk a little bit about it there i don't want to belabor the point because i mean if you listen to this show and that show one of them kind of feels redundant but 
Uh, in a quick nutshell, if uh, it's, a, it's a game like Mega Man Battle Network. Uh, so you move like in a grid. You collect cars. It's like a roguelite game. You start with a kit. You get more stuff through the kit. You fight harder and harder bosses until you, you lose and you start again with the original kit. And you get a little better each time. And the art aesthetic is totally my jam. If you know the kind of stuff that I like, I saw them like, ooh, I wonder what this game is like. And then I saw the gameplay. I'm like, oh, this is 100% my shit. Like twice. That's 200%. No. It's a thousand percent, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100, 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just 2x, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's really my shit. It's so good. It's very difficult, but it's fun. Yeah. It's nice. cool stuff. You run around sh- shooting your little magic wand at people and you use little spells to, to bring down bad guys. And it's got yeah. a pretty cute aesthetic, uh, too, I've, from doing some Googling during our other recording. Yeah. It is on uh, PC and Switch. Obviously, PC has mod support. And there's even some little cool things you can do with, like, streaming. It has, like, little things built into it. So if you're, like, playing it on stream, you mm-hmm. can have it so, like, your audience picks the rewards that you get. So, like, oh, that's cool. It gives you three options for rewards. And you can rig it so that, like, um, the stream viewers pick that rather than the player. And the player can still pick them or override it. But... And then you can also choose whether to spare or, 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 or kill the bosses, which have different reasons to do both. So... It's a fun game. I like it a lot. I've been playing it a lot. And it just came out on Thursday? Yeah. Um, I've been, I've seen people who've been playing it since, like, the beta and, like, the Kickstarter, like, the backers. And they mm. are nasty at it. They made me look real bad at the game, which I already knew <laughs> I was bad. But it's like, wowee, you are good. But the community's pretty welcoming for the most part, other than, like, the tryhards. Like, you just gotta get good. You know, it's, I hate when people want games to be easier. They don't even really like the games. Like, shut up, you dummy. Like, the people who are really good at the game and love it are like, hey, you'll get better. Like, if you need any help or any tips, I'll help you out. You know, just keep trying. Don't be afraid that you're going to die in this game. You're going to die a lot. It's fine. It's not not that you're bad. We all got to start somewhere. God, this is really welcoming. This is nice. Nice. Um, Yeah, and it's like you said, it's like it's one of those things that, like, obviously the people who've been playing since beta are better at it because, like, this kind of game is like a roguelike. It's just going to, you just got to keep practicing. You just got to get good. I saw somebody on the Twitter say, um, so one of the bots, so in Mega Man Battle Network, there was something called like the Undernet, which is basically like the dark web in real life. Um, and you'd find people there like that would like send viruses and trade illegal stuff and like all their like net navigators instead of looking cool like Mega Man and Proto Man were like evil looking little shell, shell man or whatever. And underneath that was like the secret base of the World 3 because WWW get it. Um, <laughs> it was like one of the terrorist groups that Dr. Wily ran. Because, again, instead of being, like, a terrorist through robots, he was a terrorist through the internet, which is, you know, the premise of the game. But you could, you could find, like, their old space there. And there's, like, this clean blue place where it's like, oh, this is definitely evil, but, like, like bougie evil. Mm-hmm. Um, and down there, you can find more challenges to get, like, better spells um, and fight harder bosses and really push your limits. And one of the navigators who hung out down there was this guy called Serenade. Who apparently was like the navigator to this guy that was hospital bound that you meet really early in the game. You never know who his navigator is because why would you care? It's just some random kid. Um, he's like, oh yeah, since I'm sick, I just train all day. But people, this one guy was like, unless you could like fight that secret boss, there's like trials to even get him. You shouldn't even be playing this game. I'm like, but how would people get that good at this game? He's like, gives a practice. I'm like, what game would you play in 2020 to prepare yourself for like Mega Man Battle Network? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Do you have a Game Boy Advance or DS just sitting around? Because I don't anymore. I played these <laughs> games t- 15, 12 years ago. And imagine if you're 15 or 12 now. Or like, hey, you know what? I, I grew up playing games, but I never saw those. Am I going to go go buy a Nintendo Wii U system and then go on to the eShop and then buy these games? Like, no, dog. Like, that that's, that's patently ridiculous. So, like, and it's understandable that people say, hey, it's a little bit tricky for me, but it looks really cool, and I want to support this and try this. How do I get into it? People are just good, good. Like, how? I die too fast. I don't know what's going on. Like, why are you being mean? So it's, like, a legitimate complaint. Like, I, I wish it was a little bit, as somebody who's, like, got through, like, almost a whole run, and I'll be able to do it eventually. I do wish it was the onboarding was a little bit easier to get more people involved in it. Mm-hmm. But I wish there was the challenges that are, like, I'll never be able to do this. Like, like I told you, like, uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, there's uh, Arya, Cadence's grandma. Mm-hmm. She plays the game in reverse order, like, from down from five all the way up to one. But she has, I think, one heart or half a heart. 
if she misses mm-hmm. a beat, she dies, and she can only ever use the dagger. I'm like, that's too hard for me. I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm not do gonna that. fuck around with that. I'm not mad that it's there. And mm-hmm. then there's a, a character who is that, but also has to move twice. Like, has to move twice as fast, like Bolt does. Like, it's super hard just for the sake of it. Like, if you're that good, here you go. I'm like, I'm not, but thank you. And mm-hmm. but the the like, tryhards. Glad, get glad too the options there, but. Yeah. So I don't know. I hate when people are like elitists about difficulty. Like it doesn't affect me if. The game is, like, so easy you can't possibly lose or so hard that you can't win without cheating. Like, if you have that spectrum, what does it matter? I don't know. I don't know. That's my soapbox. But we can end on something light. Something nice. Something... Yes. Something fun. What's 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 good, Steph? What's good? What is good? Oh, no. Lots of things are good. <laughs> Um, well, one of the good things out in the True. world, yeah, like, lots of things are actually lots of things are coming back next week. Um, actually, both things that you'll be hearing from me about in my getting by episodes are coming back next week. Um, but one of those things is Ducktales. Woo! Woo! Ducktales season three will be premiering on Saturday, which is exciting. Um, I mean the the end of Ducktales season two was pretty, like, excitingly like climactic and like fun and actiony um but they did introduce like a a dramatic new villain sort of thing that will cl- clearly be the the underlying baddie for season three um Ooh, i like it so like there's a lot of like so like Ooh. a lot of things are like, a lot of things have been wrapped up or like um like plot plot threads have been tied but like it just kind of gives more space for more things to uh more things to happen um okay. th- like in a more complex way now that the now that those things have been tied up okay so like if that makes sense some stories so you can get a little bit more opened up yeah exactly so like some yeah, things are sense. tied up so you can keep on keep on tracking tr- tracking trucking with more complex things so uh so it looks like the um, it's just going to be two episodes, so I guess it'll be coming out weekly. So this is only two episodes. I mean, like next Saturday, it will be pre- the we'll get two new episodes on Saturday, and then oh, okay, okay. Like it's not going to be like a like a Netflix like here's the whole season kind of binge situation. Well, that's fine. That's I don't mind this weekly stuff. It gives us it lets us not burn out of everything right away, and also helps the discussions be even more fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And looking at this uh, news, like like press release thing about it, um, aside from like all of the amazing current cast coming back, Selma Blair, BB Newworth, Stephanie Beatrice, Jaleel White, like Doug Jones, James Marsters, like oh, yeah, I've, I've seen this press release, I, I, but it was before the season was actually coming back. Yeah, Retta, like a bunch of people are going to be in the season, including Bill Farmer, who plays Goofy in. Uh, in a goofy movie if i am not mistaken <laughs> which uh i feel like is gonna be interesting since we already oh. have i heard we already, rumors that goofy was coming back because we already have because like obviously like donald and then there's donald and the three caballeros but they've been reintroduced as like his like college band basically but like in like in a slight spoiler there's a scene in the second season where Donald's been like stranded on a desert island for a while and he comes out with like this melon that's like his Wilson um <laughs> but it it's it's Mickey Mouse and he talks with it but when he talks it's like hey now like it's like it's like a Mickey Mouse voice like ho ho like <laughs> like which is super funny coming out of Donald because you can't tell anything like when Donald talks you can't tell what he's saying but but when, can do the, a Mickey impression. <laughs> when the melon when the melon talks it's very clearly Mickey Mouse like that's funny but um, I mean, yeah, like we we were saying, like the Telspin characters are in there. Powerline is referenced, so he exists. Actually, there's been a few posters of Powerline. I think they mentioned the town that they're from, and Darkwing Duck is there. So I mean, it's yeah, Goofy's like, in the this, whole Saturday morning thing. Yeah, Goofy's in this poster for season two. I'm trying to zoom oh, in, but it won't. Oh, then yeah, he's there. I'm excited to see Darkwing Duck's daughter, Goslin. She's always pretty cool. Nice. So yeah, so. Okay. pretty excited about that i just like i said i just caught up on season two today so it's um exciting to see to like be ready to go on a new show so very good very good 
just gonna throw oh, this cool. in that's, another. That's this is like just throw this picture in another. Uh, this poster in another window so that I can properly zoom in on it. <laughs> the the tactics it's got like little like ah oh, baby beaks robot boy. There's the like the Huey caveman from Time Foon, like oh, yeah, Numbras awesome. in this. Um Daisy Duck is yeah, supposed to be that, in this. That's Daisy Duck, yeah. Yeah. There's Goofy in she... the background. Where's he at? He's right he's uh right next to Beagley. Oh, okay. On her right. Oh yes, there he is, yeah. And oh, okay. oh yeah. Like everyone. I really like here. Allison. Which one's Allison? Allison's, uh, she helps take over, like, she's, like, Glongold's personal assistant. Oh, okay. She's, like, long-suffering businesswoman. She's right under, she's, like, next to Goldie in this picture. On her right. Oh, right, right. Uh, yeah. She's, above like, so the, long-suffering. Uh, and... Above the guy that had the lamp. <laughs> yeah, the gin. He's like, there was a genie there. It's, it's not anymore, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. And is that Chippendale in the little plane at the very bottom right? Yeah, I think that's the Rescue Rangers, actually. It's the whole Rescue Rangers? Yes. I think it is. A, I think Gadget's in there. And, yes. and Monterey Jack. That's the shit Which would be like. good, because uh, the Rescue Rangers was great. Rescue Rangers I, I really is the shit. Enjoying it. I can't believe, also, just like as a final aside, I can't believe that Renee Montoya is Gizmo Duck's mom. Hey, it's good stuff. It's the crossover I, I didn't know I needed. Yeah, I think that's them. I, I think that's them in the bottom. Yeah, there's like a lot of characters here. It's, it's very good. Oh, that's Baloo up in the top right. Surfing on the little nice? little glider thing, yeah. Heck um, yeah. And that's a Telspin ship, actually. Okay, that's the, mm-hmm. that's actually their ship. Tel- yeah, it's a Telspin plane. Cool, cool, We're cool. At, yeah. We love so to I'm see it. So I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, I like Darkwing Duck's new costume. Um, with the little... The, the, the cape's connected to the buttons. It, it's not just like a jacket jacket. So it's... It's funny that it's DuckTales are like, yo, there's all these characters that aren't just Scrooge and his family that are super mm-hmm. cool and interesting. So I can't wait. Can't wait to see what they come out with. It's going to be choice. All right. Well, uh, that's that's that on that, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it is. Yeah. I think that's everything, honestly. <laughs> cool beans. I think we did it. We did cool it, beaks. dog. Um, also, fi- fi- final note on DuckTales is, like, wondering... Like, they spent this whole, like, plot looking for Della, and then they're, like, like, Daisy's in this picture, so, like, wondering if Donald's gonna have, like, a romantic arc. Who the hell is the, like, is their dad, and why don't they have any, like, give a single fuck <laughs> what happened to him? Like, Disney inversion, I guess. Like... <laughs> but... I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know, because... Their uncle is Donald. Donald's uncle is Scrooge. Mm-hmm. Also, and there's Della, a scene. Della is his sister. Della is his sister. sister. Okay. Della's Donald's sister, and it's really funny. There's a scene in the finale where um, Gander and Feathery show up, and I didn't realize until just that moment that like Gander's the green one, and he's like the rich, like schmoozy, schmoozy duck and like feathery's like the grown-up like he's the red one and he's like the grown-up woodchuck like nerd and oh, then yeah and he and they're just see like they're all like the three of them are posing him them those two and donald are posing and then it like zooms over to the three nephews and dewey looks over and he's oh god i'm the donald like <laughs> <laughs> yeah donald wore blue yeah that's really good actually that's <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> I had never put that together until that very second. Well, Donald wears black in this one, so it's, yeah, it's a little yeah. bit, I think it's a little bit harder because we don't see Feathery all that often. Yeah, he's just in that one episode, but also, but yeah, where's so... that like, where's that horrible child at? What's his name? Oh, uh, Doofus, Doofus Drake. Doofus Maybe. Drake. That guy sucks. He's the worst. <laughs> he's the like. I-, I was surprised he wasn't in the the episode where Glomgold rounds up all the villains in. Duckburg to like try to take on Scrooge, and I was like very shocked because that's because he's not Scrooge's villain. He's just Dewey's villain. He's just, like, yeah, he's just he, a be- or, Louis's villain. Uh, he's Louis's villain, but he's just like such a creep. He's the scariest person in this show, including Magic of the Spell. Yeah, because he's never funny. Like he's never like Magic has at least like I want to do a speech because I've been waiting. 
doofus is just like my parents are slaves like my oh parents are slaves okay cool i guess uh well i'm gonna be over here real quick uh i like this show it's good it's good stuff good stuff Alrighty, well, yeah. So let me. I think we're like we're done for the done for the day, right? I think we are. It's, it's been take a, us it's out. Been a good one. It's been a good run. So you, you uh, take us out. You I'll are? take us out. Yeah, you took us Thanks in. Thanks for me. I appreciate it. Carry carry us on our back out of this episode. My back. Um. Yeah. So if you want to find us on the internet, you can find our podcast at characterreveal.simplecast.fm. You can listen to it in the browser there, or you can listen to it in the podcast catcher of your choice by searching for Character Reveal. Um, If your podcast catcher gives you the ability, it would be awesome if you would hit that rate and review. Five stars would be awesome, but if you feel differently, please uh, hit us with a comment so we can know what to do better. Um, If if you'd rather email us that comment, um, or if you've been listening to our Getting By episodes and you want to reach out and tell us what you've been up to, you can find us at Character Reveal at gmail.com you can find us on twitter at character rev you can find us on facebook at character reveal you can find us on instagram if you want to hit us with an insta dm at character reveal you can find dom anywhere he wants to be found on the internet at brother dom b-r-o-t-h-a-d-o-m um and you can find me at captain steph on twitter at the snow queer on tumblr at hell underscore steph on instagram um I'll say I'll throw this out here. I'll say we we are on Patreon, char- patreon.com slash character reveal, but money's tight for a lot of people right now. If there's something that like we're we're doing all right, so if there's something else that you want to put your money towards, um, there are lots of mutual aid kind of funds, um, like support funds for various like groups of people who are be really like struggling from the the quarantine or from being out of work or anything like that. Um, probably put your money towards those instead. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll make it through. Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna be okay, but um, but yeah, so we uh we hope all you gonna be okay, and that's about it. Yeah, I think that's it. Stay hey, safe, uh, stay well. Yeah, stay safe, stay well. Keep your distance. Wash your hands. Cover your mouth with your arm. Thanks for listening to us another episode. We appreciate you all continuing to rock with us. Uh, we've had one of our best months in a long time. So putting out stuff you all like. We hope. And uh, until next time, see you later. Bye.